Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and this is a 1998 Superformance Cobra. It is beautiful, it's amazing. Let's take a look at it. So a lot of you guys have been seeing this thing in the background of videos, been making comments that you want to see a video on this thing, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about why it's here, take a look at it because it's an amazing car, it's beautiful. And the fact that this is not a genuine 1960s Cobra, it is a Superformance, kind of like a replica or a rolling chassis that you can buy and put your own engine. And I think they can also put the engine in for you. I'm not sure exactly how that process works with Superformance, but the results are absolutely stunning. So I did look this up, and the rolling chassis without an engine, without anything, was 80 grand. You haven't even got a car that can drive, and you've already spent 80 grand. But again, this isn't a car that you're going to be worrying about budgeting with. This is a car you splurge on. The price really isn't the issue, it's the fact that you've got to have one, and I want one, and I don't care what it costs. So that's basically what we've got going on here. With the setup that's currently in here, very easily over 500 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque in a car that's almost the size of a Miata. Very fast. Scary fast. If you don't know what you're doing as far as driving skills, this car, along with that red one, can put you in the ditch and round telephone pole really fast. Before we dive in, let's take a look and let you guys oogle over this beautiful masterpiece. That is a big open mouth to pull in a lot of air to help keep this cool. And you can see an oil cooler right there with the red AN elbows to keep the engine oil also very cool. And the front of this car has the iconic 1960 Shelby Cobra design to it. It is beautiful. You like the color, Mrs. Wizard? It is quite pretty. Blue is my favorite color. What color blue would you call that? This is like a royal blue. Royal blue, huh? There's lots of things on this car that are very much race-oriented. Just like the Hollibrand style wheels. There are no lug nuts. It's one center, kind of a large lug nut right here. It's actually got lacing wire to hold it in place. But use an aluminum hammer and take that off, kind of knock it off and take the wheel off. Here's our cute little mirrors, some wind baffles on the side to keep the wind off of you. And it does have side exit exhaust that will burn you to a crisp if you're not careful when you get out. It does have a heat shield on it, but not down here. Very easy to not pay attention and burn your back of your calf. And as you can see on the rear wheel, we have staggered wheels. It is not the same size as the front. It's much wider, much beefier for more traction for all that power that it has. And again, it has the center style reten retention on the wheel. And on the back, it has some small turn signal taillights. It has a giant fuel filler cap right here. Very similar to the original style fuel filler cap. No scratches, no dings, nothing's going on with this car, and we are definitely keeping it that way while it's in the shop. Just like the Dodge Viper over there, it doesn't have door handles out here. It has to be done on the inside with this little handle. Caution, hot exhaust, just like we just talked about. They're trying to tell you again, please don't burn your leg. This does have the 427 Ford Cobra engine, just like the Shelby Cobra should have. That's exactly what's in this car. And speaking of the 427, let's go ahead and open the hood. Here we have a big block 427 Ford. Again, way over 500 horsepower. Very, very powerful. This has a standard carburetor on it, just like the old days with electric choke and everything. And amazingly, both of my techs, Daniel Sun and Magic Mike, 
didn't really understand how to operate one as far as cold start procedure. And I don't blame them, they're young. This is before their time. This really wasn't what they're trained to mess with as far as the carburetor, and that's where the car wizard comes in. But let me demonstrate how you start one of these cars. Just with any car that has a four barrel, an electric choke, or even just a standard style choke, the first thing you do is a full depress of the gas pedal all the way down, and then you let go, just like so. What that does is squirt a little bit of gas into the throat of the carburetor, and it also sets the choke. Okay, I'll go ahead and start it. because it's on high idle setting on the carburetor. After it warms up for 30 seconds or a minute or so, then you hit the gas, give it a little goose on the gas, and that'll set it back down to a normal idle. And now you notice our idle is around 800. This thing sounds amazing. So that's how you start a carbureted car. Amazingly, neither of the techs understood that. They just kept cranking. It's like, guys, I know you know what you're doing on the car, but let me show you how to do a carburetor, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to get mad at them because this is before their time. Everything that they've gained experience on in their life didn't even have a carburetor. These cars weren't around in the dealerships and things that they worked on. I have seen these for many years. This is. When I was younger, this was still on the road, this type of stuff, so I fully understand it. But this thing does sound amazing. The engine's cold. I didn't wrap it out to five grand or something crazy. I gave you a little goose and let you guys hear it. And when it came in, the choke was not set up properly. That was something that the customer actually asked us to do. I set the automatic choke and the high idle settings. Everything is dialed in perfectly now. The next thing we were going to do is the valve cover gaskets. We are waiting on the gaskets to show up but this is a two-piece set. It actually has a spacer, an aluminum spacer, and then another set of gaskets for the actual valve cover itself that says Cobra on it. So let's let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a quick tour of the really tiny interior. Well, 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 ladies and gents, this is a very tiny, tiny interior, and it seems counterintuitive, but it, you almost have to be tall to get into this car without touching the tailpipe that was just there, which is kind of hard when you got to get through a very, very tiny little door. But nonetheless, if we look here, we started our gauge cluster, which spills over halfway across our dash. So here we are at our gauge cluster, and you'll see that we've got some important ones right away. We've got our, our oil temperature, our water temperature, and then our tachometer. The blue light is for our high beams and the amber light is for your turn signal. You better know if you've gone up or down because it's not telling you left or right, it's just saying on or off with that amber light. As we slide over, we'll see that we've got how many amps are left on that battery if it's doing in good shape. We've also got a fuel gauge and our oil pressure gauge as well. Here is our speedometer. Notice that this is going counterclockwise rather than clockwise on most cars. And you'll see that it does have 12,168 miles. Again, lots of controls here for wipers, for how bright we want those gauges to be as well. As we slide down, not a lot going on here because again, this is a custom built car, but you will see that we've got a very simple standard stick shift. And you'll see that if we roll the camera ever so slightly, it is a four speed. As you note that our seats, they are a leather. They have a nice bolster on the side. They're very, very simple. Notice that there is no back headrest on here, so be careful. There's obviously also no airbags in this car as well because this is, again, a custom-built car. So do be careful. But there are some pretty hellacious seat belts here to make sure you don't go anywhere. So definitely you're not going to have you know, anything happening with those you know, flying out through that seat belt. Do have custom floor mats that are in perfect, pristine shape. 
There is no back seat at all, not even a shelf, because again, custom build. But we do have a fire extinguisher right here, ready for us if we were to happen to need it. We do have our rear view mirror is located here on the dash, not up on the glass. So that is a definitely an interesting part. And being that it's such a short little car, there's not much difference from between putting it here or putting it there. So it's not much difference there. And we do only have the one side mirror. The other side does not have one. But again, not having a top on this car at all provides you with an insanely wide view around the car. There's no major posts, pillars blocking your view. So having no mirror on that other side definitely is not going to be a problem. Looking at the steering wheel one last time, you'll see that we've got our Cobra symbol in the center. And again, as I mentioned, there's no airbag, but it does have a very nice wood steering wheel. So enough of this interior talk, let's get this up in the air. So imagine this guys, our GoPro just died again. Is there a good GoPro out there? Do they all overheat and die? Hoovy has the problem all the time. The film crew with car issues has it all the time. I don't know, they're trash. But hey, let's start with the car. This is an oil cooler and we have a nice scoop here that allows the air to deflect right through the oil cooler and down. Nothing's leaking there. If it was, that would be a nice area to look to make sure it's dry in here. It's nice and dry. Check our wheels out. Brakes are good. Our coilovers are nice and dry. Nothing's loose there. Sway bar link is good. Here's our radiator core support. Just a little strap of steel here. Everything's nice and dry there. Here's our steering rack, which is a standard manual steering rack. It does not have power steering. But you don't need power steering on a light car like this. Our coilovers are nice and dry. Brake pads are nice and thick. Nothing loose there. Nothing leaking from the brakes. Here's the front of our engine. We've got the harmonic balancer. There's our oil filter, which is remote. It's mounted separately from the engine in line with the oil cooler. Here's our Canton oil pan nice and dry. It was kind of it was kind of wet earlier from the valve cover gaskets, but we cleaned it off while we were investigating and we did confirm it was a valve cover gaskets leaking, which you can see. You can see the blue colored gasket is actually leaking oil out of it currently. If we do nothing, it will continue to dribble down the block and end up down here again. So, we know where the oil leak is coming from now. Here's our big transmission. Everything's nice and dry there. Nothing that we need to do there. Here's a tiny drive shaft here, Mrs. Wizard. Wow, that is itty bitty. It is short and girthy. Few joints are good on it. Here's our big beefy differential here. Nothing's leaking. Here's our CV boots, which are nice and dry. Brakes are nice and thick. And our coilover is also nice and dry. Our sway bar link is good as well. Nothing loose there. Here is a fuel filter, Holly. The fuel uh, to filter our fuel going up there. Nice thick brake pads. It looks. Let me see. So we do have a small seepage coming from this CV boot. It doesn't need to be replaced. It just needs the clamp tightened or replaced there on the end, and that will take care of that. And luckily, it has not leaked hardly anything out, so that's good. Here's our big fuel tank, which is basically the back half of the car. And the nice, very wide tires in the back for traction. But other than the few small leaks we found, there's nothing serious to speak of. You can tell this thing was designed for raw power in a small package. Let's go ahead and get this thing back on the ground. There is one other small problem with this car. The amp gauge fluctuates really badly, which is a common issue on these. 
the alternator's putting out amps, everything's working properly, just the gauge is measuring it wrong. We've got a new gauge ordered. As soon as it comes in, we'll get that installed. Also, we'll get the valve cover issue taken care of with the leak. The bill on this is not going to be very high, a little over $1,000. We'll get everything taken care of. This car could easily be much higher than that, but luckily this customer doesn't have a giant bill. I think they just bought this car. They want to get the few things sorted out and then get it home and enjoy it, so it's very understandable. There are a lot of things on this car that you could get just standard parts like the DuraSpark ignition controller. That's not fancy, that's not special. They used that all the way back in the 70s on Ford trucks or cars. Um, there's lots of parts and pieces on this car that are just standard parts and pieces. All the gauges you can order, switches, things that, there's not special Cobra only items. But there are some items that would be Cobra only like the valve covers, the steering wheel different various things on this car. It is extremely fast, it is extremely cool, and we'll get these few items taken care of and get this back to the customer. But I know you guys wanted to see a video on it and check this thing out. It is a glorious, beautiful car. Very powerful, very, very amazing. If you're curious what kind of tools we're gonna to use to fix this super performance Cobra, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more videos to come. Thanks for watching.